I was recently on a project where the sales team wanted to get an email notification whenever a lead went untouched for a set amount of time. You could maybe call these neglected leads or leads that are currently open but that aren't being worked. And on the project, we had built this and implemented it and they really liked it and I had the thought, you know what, there's probably a lot of people and businesses out there that want some similar functionality. Let me show you how to make it with Power Automate within the Power Platform. Ultimately, how this flow is going to work is it is going to run every day and is going to look and find leads that have not been modified within the last seven days. This flow can definitely be changed and modified to meet your business's needs. For example, say you want it to check every week so that there's only one weekly email notification, or if you have longer sales timelines, maybe you want it to be once a month. You also might have different defining criteria for what is considered a neglected lead, but in my example, I want it to be leads that have a status of open, but that have a modified date older than seven days, as in they haven't been touched in a week. Because of this, you will likely need to use what's called a scheduled flow and not an automated flow. The reason for this is because in my example, we are gonna be looking to go find records that haven't been updated. So we can't have an update trigger our flow. So if you are looking to build this similarly to me, you're gonna to need to create a scheduled Power Automate flow within the Power Platform. Now, once you do that, the first action that you are going to need is a list rows action. Now, this is, again, assuming you are using Dataverse. I'm going to assume that if you are here, you are. I am in my scenario because I'm using the Microsoft Dynamics Sales app, but you can go ahead and select the Add New Action and then search for list rows or select on the Dataverse category and then finally list rows action. And in my example, we are looking for leads. So in this table, I'm gonna go ahead and search for leads and select that there. This is going to open up the list rows action inputs. And again, you have things like the select columns and the filter rows as well as the fetch XML. I've actually already created the filtering necessary to meet the needs that I mentioned already. If I paste that in here, you can see that this means I want the state code to be zero, that is the code for an open lead, and then I want the modified on to be older than seven days. This Microsoft.Dynamics.CRM text is just the OData criteria or the OData expression for that older than seven days filter. I gotta be honest, I don't really use the OData as much as I just use the filter with the fetch XML in the action. If I go ahead and copy and paste that into my action, this is going to reflect something very similar. Again, you can see that we are getting the state code and we are getting the modified on date and we are wanting it to meet that particular criteria. Now, one thing to mention is Realistically, the only field that we need at this point is the owner ID field, as in the GUID or the ID of the owner of this lead record. This, I would say, is the simplest way to use the list rows action. So now at this point, we have a list of owners who are the owners of neglected leads. And what we need to do is we need to clean up this list of owners a couple different ways. So. I will show you how to do this, but first we're gonna just go ahead and initialize an array variable. The reason we need this variable is because now we are going to actually add the individual owner GUIDs to this array, and this array is ultimately going to be what's used for to gather the list of owners that we need to send an email to. If it's not making sense, just give me like two minutes, I promise it will. Now go ahead and create and apply to each action and throw in the variable outputs of your list rows. What we are looking to do is within this apply to each for every lead owner that we found, we want to add it to our array. Now, one extra step I would recommend you add to kind of protect and bulletproof your flow is an additional condition statement that I'm adding here, which is saying, hey, only add the owner ID if the owner is a system user. If you aren't aware, the owner field is what's called a polymorphic lookup, as in it can look to multiple tables, not just one. And so if 
you are expecting a GUID to be in the user record, but it could actually be a team record, then that could potentially fail our flow. So while I'm creating my condition, you'll see that if I type in owner, that there's two different owner outputs. There's a type and a value. I'll go ahead and select the type. And then in the equal to, we'll just go ahead and type out the system user. The output of the owner type is either system user or team. And so then this way, right, if the owner ID is recognized as a being on the user table as opposed to the team table, then we are going to follow the yes action, which is then where we want to add an append to array variable. This just means that we want to add an item or we want to add a GUID to our variable that we already initialized beforehand, the list of owners. And then in the value, I'm gonna go ahead and search for owner once again, and now selecting the value option. Again, this is basically just saying that for every owner of every lead in our list, we want to add that owner ID to a list in our array. Now there's one nuance that we definitely need to consider, and that is that at this point in time, we aren't protecting against an owner who has two neglected leads. So for example, this list rows action is going to pull in all of the leads, and then it's going to add the owner of all of those leads to our list. Now, what if I am an owner and I have two neglected leads? Well, for one, I need to stop having neglected leads, but Nonetheless, I don't necessarily, in my scenario, want to be emailed twice, right? So we need to, in some way, remove any potential duplicates from this list of owner IDs. And so we can actually do this using a fairly simple expression called the union expression. And I actually got this idea from a Flow Joe, Joe Unwin video. Go ahead and link that up here if you wanna check that out for more detail. I'm not gonna try to explain the union expression like he does there, but Essentially what this can do is this is going to remove the duplicates if there are any, and if there are no duplicates, then it's going to keep all of those IDs exactly how we have them. Now, setting up this expression, we're gonna just go ahead and use a compose action. If I add that compose and then swipe over to the expression tab and type in union, then you can see there's really two components to this expression. And fortunately for us, the first and the second component can both be our lead owner array. So I can actually just select this twice and separating them with a column. Again, this is going to remove the duplicates within our array. Now we are almost to our final action, but just to briefly go through our flow, once again, we are getting all of the leads that meet this neglected lead criteria, which is in our situation, leads that have a status of open, but a modified on day greater than seven days. And then within that list of leads that we gather, we want to create a list of owners and remove any potential duplicates or remove any owners that aren't system users but our teams. And at this point, we now have the list of owner IDs that we need. And so now for each one of these owner IDs, we want to send them an email. So we need an apply to each loop. If I add this action and then add in the value of the array, again, not of the list rows, but of the array that we've created, which at this point is defined as the outputs of our compose action because we want the array that we've created minus any potential duplicates. And within our apply to each loop, we are going to want to send an email. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for the send an email action. Now, if you're paying attention, you will note that at this point in time, we do not have the owner's emails. We only have the owner's IDs. So we need to actually go and get the owner IDs. If you want and you're a pro, you can actually do this in your initial list rows action, but in order for simplistic sake, let's go ahead and add a get a row by ID action. What this does in just a five second summary is this can go and find all the information you want on a specific record in the system given that you have that records ID, which in our scenario, right, we do. Using the get a row by ID, the table we are looking for is the users table and the ID, we can actually just use this current item component of the apply to each loop that we are currently on. And for performance sake, I would always recommend adding in the columns that you actually need into the select columns here. And in our scenario, we only need the internal email address of the user record. We don't necessarily need 
all the information. And so what this is going to do is this going to reduce the overall load on this action as it doesn't have to go into the system and get all of the individual data points. It only needs to get one. And we only need one because that's really all we're looking to do to then send our email. Now within the Outlook action, we can add that internal email address, the primary email into the two, and we can fill out the subject and the body here. Now there are a ton of really cool things that you could do with this email body that I'm not covering today. One example is I've had where clients would like to embed a link to a view within Microsoft Dynamics. So they had a corresponding neglected leads view. You could create an HTML table and embed that here and have it show all the individual records that a particular owner has that are neglected. You could have no link, you could copy their sales manager on the email. There's a whole bunch of different things. And for the sake of this example, I'm not necessarily going to show all of that today because at the end of the day, we are sending an email notification. Now at this point, our flow is built and it's ready to be saved and tested. Let me go ahead and save our flow. And while this is saving, I just wanna thank you for sticking this far in the video. I appreciate you being here. Go ahead, if you like the video, to like it and comment down below and tell me another concept that you think that would be beneficial to know. Okay, cool. Now that that is done saving, let's go ahead and test our flow. If I go ahead and test this, we can follow along the steps here. And, and as I click through them, I just wanna show you, you can see that in my list rows that we found an output and then within the initialized variable, you know, our variable is being set up. And then within this first apply to each, you can see that it says one of one, as in there was one lead record found and that owner of that lead record was a system user. So we followed the yes path and then the owner's GUID was added to our array. This is the GUID for my user in the system. Then we move on to our compose action where we remove any duplicates, right? At this point, there's only going to be one, but you can see that the inputs are the same as the outputs. that this union action is not going to have any poor impacts on the list if there are no changes that are needed to be made. Continue moving on, you can now see that here is my email provided by the get a row by ID, provided from my GUID that was in the compose action, and then we have our send an email action using the email and the contents of the email that we have set. If I hop over to Outlook, just so you know that I am not lying to you, here is my email. The flow is working on a scheduled basis and finding any neglected leads and whatever that may mean for your business and sending sales owners email notifications to prompt them to go and work them so that leads don't go stale. Thank you to you for seeing the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of Citizen Developer, and I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.